let's um, swing on in and review the minutes that um, I shared, um, share any updates from any city committees, aka Michael, who is on all the city committees, but if anyone else has anything to share, um, and then just check in about the committee on committees planning. Um, and then we have stipend discussion discontinued. And I know in the minutes you shared like the, the recording from the video. And that was the one that I was on. And I thought there was another conversation after that. So we can check in about kind of what are the what what that looks like and what that next steps for that would be um, before closing. So how does that sound? Anything to add or change or shift? That'd be super speedy. Um, so let's look at the minutes, pull up the minutes from, I touched on the email, if that's helpful too. Thank you so much, Cameron. Does anyone have anything to change? Oops, we've got someone joining. Nope, maybe not. <laughs> Does anyone want to make a motion to approve the minutes? Pella makes motion to approve the minutes. I motion, yeah, I motion. Does Lauren second? I can, although I wasn't there, so. Oh, I that's right, you can't. Should not. Yeah. Oh, I second. Can. You can. You can, you can approve minutes even if you weren't there. That's appropriate and per Robert's rules. Okay, then I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Um, thank you guys. So, um, okay, so we are going to have a committee on committees like we had a couple of months ago at this point, like six months ago, um, where, uh, you know, to get all, all the committee chairs or kind of delegates from the committee chairs in a Zoom room together to be able to learn and share from each other and to share information and um, like materials. So kind of thinking that we wanted to do this in April because then we'll have a little bit more of an understanding about how the um, stipend process is going to work out and um, and kind of have a pitch to like make to the committee and committees about if their members are going to be eligible getting them to sign up. Um, and then we also wanted to have it because we're going to rework kind of what the create like the former creative discourse contract of having a uh, big in-person event. Um, and so wanting like wanting to rework that and Bob Michael uh, isn't here to kind of dig in on like what that could look like, but of also kind of rolling out what the next steps for for that would be. Um, does that is that something like what people kind of envision like why we want to have this committee on committee is kind of the, the buckets to tackle. I think it was just like building relationships across these committee chairs so that like if and when things come up, they know who to call on or check in with or things like that. Um, so what do the next steps for that look like? Like, what do we need to do? Palin's getting it, not Palin, I'm, sorry, I'm like, you guys are on the same side of my screen right now. You guys are gonna get it in the, um, in, on the, on the calendar and then, um, and then we'll kind of just do more planning as April is getting closer about kind of what will, what specifically will be on the agenda or is there any other planning that needs to happen now? No, I can, I can, I can get that on everyone's calendars. Um, we decided on what day? Let me pull that up. April, April. 11th at 5.30. Yeah, actually, let's all just take a moment and make sure that's on our personal calendars and if that works. <laughs> I'm not saying this out of experience or anything. Yes. Yeah. I, I can you send it out. Yeah, I can nice. do that. I can do that for y'all this week. Well, next week, if um, that would be appropriate, just the calendar hold for folks. I would exactly. obviously say, like, this is for, you know, the CJAC committee, you know, again, coming together, they'll have more information in an agenda soon. Just want to put this hold on the calendar. Right. And maybe something of what you said last time too, of like, here's what we're going to talk about in generally. And then if you can't make it, see if you can send someone else from your committee. Right. Yeah. Was, was there any discussion? Sorry, I wasn't able to be there last meeting, but um, around like 
I know we had talked at some point and we've done a little bit of this of like kind of deeper dive with a couple committees of like, like what would it look like to partner together? And like, I mean, I love the idea of getting everyone back together. I think people found that valuable and I think it's great too. But are there like going to be either examples we could bring or some, I feel like just making it tangible for people. So it's not just, it feels very like amorphous in the discussions I know I had and like the breakouts and stuff last time were like, they were great, but they were like all over the map and people just like, in many cases, just like starting to think about like, what might this be and how might we? And so I'm just like, how do we like make it more tangible, more tangible for folks of like, with some specific examples of like what this is looking like in some of the committees or how specifically we could partner. Anyway, we're getting like more into agenda, but it might be work we'd want to do. Right. Before we dig into the like up some of what we've been doing before in the next couple months. Because I think we were talking more about of like doing outreach for the stipend, the equity report and next steps, and then the relationship building. But right, we could ahead of time think about who are the committees that we want to put into small groups together and why and what could they be doing, right? Like, do you have anything that's coming to mind right now, Lauren? Like all the- I'm thinking of like, we had talked about like housing as like a particular area and we've had some meetings with some of the different groups. So maybe even some of that's just in like the- um, sharing how we have been working with some groups since we had all gotten together like that were and that like the stipends what you know I'm just like I don't know if if we're going to keep bringing people together I just want to make sure that it continues to feel valuable to people and like that yeah. they're getting I think the stipend information and the equity report stuff will be valuable in and of itself but then also like how do they go deeper in their own committees like with potential partnership with us. Right. The stipend and the report could just be an email. <laughs> and so, right, like, what are we doing to make it super engaging and useful? Yeah. I want to holler at um, uh, Mike Philbrick yeah. just to thank him for being here. He's our uh, community resource officer, just for folks who don't know him. Welcome. Hi, Mike. Good morning. <laughs> Let me pause. Sorry, there. trying to turn my audio on here. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, do you? Hi, guys. I'm Mike Fulbright. I'm uh, with uh, with Montpelier PD. I'm a community resource officer, um, and I'm trying to get involved in as many area groups and committees and such to get as many viewpoints as possible on how we can, uh, as a department, uh, better engage um, our community, especially the the marginalized members. Um, but thanks for for letting me join you guys. Please jump in with any thoughts or reactions or reflections, or if you have any specific comments. Thanks. All right, thanks. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail that conversation. I think we we're kind of going in circles a little bit. So <laughs> I think that's okay. appropriate time to move on. <laughs> Way to nip it in the bud. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're all like, yes, this is a good idea. Yeah. Um, Pets, but I'm glad to. <laughs> Let's keep thinking about that. And sorry, I'm. Yeah, I don't have anything smart to say else about that. Should we talk about the stipend discussion? <laughs> so, yeah, so is that that's officially in the budget, right? And so it'll be voted on at town meeting day. Um, yeah, what else do we? Yeah, it was a stipend discussion continued, knowing that the city council had some questions and concerns about the kind of proposal that we put forward. I know um, we were gonna like circle back with ethics to get lessons learned from them in a couple of months, but that is there like, does that, like based on the conversation at city council, is there any like knowing we have kind of a $30,000 cap for participation in these, um, kind of in the city, in the, um, at writ large, like, it, does that change how we want to approach, like, what the proposal that we want to bring forward come April, May, you know, June, leading up to the next fiscal year? Well, I'll give you some, I, I did talk to Essex a oh. bit the other day. Um, right. Yeah, and so, I will say that they are having issues and we had a really good conversation about 
systemic issues. Like this is hard to implement because the system is not made to support folks right. that need support. And so um, they're really running into some tax issues. Um, we've talked about it a little bit here about like getting W-2s and that kind of thing from people. And that's really hard. That's a barrier for a lot of folks. And, and so it's become um, very administratively burdensome to them, I think, is what I've heard. But they really are dedicated to getting it done. And so um, I think it's good that we're talking about that kind of now and just have sort of an example of how that's been rolling out. So there, there will be lessons learned. I just, I think it's important to know and to note that they are running into these sort of issues that we've already sort of identified as ones that will be issues, right? Yeah. And um, uh, I think it'll be good to be able to come to council very honestly and say like, you know, here are the issues that Essex has been having, but, you know, be, you know, she said something very important is that like, you know, these systems changes are hard because this system is perpetuating, you know, itself. And so anything that we do that sort of bucks any sort of status quo is going to be harder. And so I think having this amount of time to think about how to roll this out before the money is actually available is really helpful and valuable, honestly. Um, it's been interesting to me, the conversations in the public about the stipends, um, especially since uh, they've been identified as a very important part of the council strategic plan since, you know, back in the fall when we got the equity reports and when we talked about that. So um, it's interesting that when you put money to it, it, it's like it becomes real and people then have like issues. Right. And so um I don't really know where I was going with that. Just saying that like it is, it, they are having issues and it is hard. And I think it's worthwhile to push through how hard this will be um, because it is really important. And I think what, where I was going with that is that it might be good for this group to talk about the value add that yeah. this has and really put that in, in writing somewhere, maybe on your webpage that we have is like, here is why we're presenting this because of these reasons and maybe like quoting the equity report is a good thing for that. But I think coming up with some sort of like, here is why this is important to be included in the budget um, more than we've already done. Yeah, just totally agree with all of that. Um, I mean, it, you know, like the public input was kind of a mix. Like a lot of it was like, well, I volunteered for years and I don't expect to stipend to volunteer. And it's like, well, of course, like you're the kind of person who can, but like that's different, you know? So some of it just seemed like there was that thread. Then there was also, I think like a healthy amount of skepticism, like from council and some staff and stuff like that this will work, that it will actually bring in new different people who wouldn't otherwise serve. Um, and I think that's like the, I'm hoping, but like but the six months that Essex will be ahead of us. Like to me, part of our work is like, well, what's like, what's the outreach plan? Like what's the work that goes beyond it? Like if we just make them available, I don't think it will change anything or it won't change much, I would guess. So it's like, what's the whole plan around the money and that we now have resources to also um, support people. So if we are like able to recruit and like make it attractive and appealing for different people to actually participate in city government um, groups and can take away the barrier of the money. So I don't know, like that was definitely, I, I think that's part of like what for the plan that council would like to see is like, what's the whole package that's that stipends are part of that is gonna actually change who might apply to serve. And I think there was also like, People are like a little grumbly about this. And, and but like, we're like, well, it was an equity like report. And so yeah. I, think, I think us continue, like that was a good lesson learned for like how this group putting things forward. I mean, like, you know, and I mean, like at one point I was like, I, I was like, I find it really like, I don't remember how I said it, but like kind of frustrating that as soon as it became something about money all of a sudden it's really hard for us to do like we've been willing to do other like 
and the language on the website. website and da, da, da. Like we're not like we need to be willing to like actually put resources into these changes. We can't just do like low hanging fruit things. Um, and I mean, everyone like supported it in the end and stuff. So, but um, like, I think we need to be able to show like how we can measure if it's working. People are also concerned, like, how will we even know if it's working? Are people who are just already able and willing to volunteer just going to take it? And then what have we accomplished? And what would, you know, so those are like the kinds of questions, at, like, predictably. Yeah. Um, so I think just for as we come up with our package, so just being able to answer that those pieces would be really helpful. This is reminding me when we were having that conversation in city council, I thought it would be really help. It would have been really helpful going into that conversation if we had done some sort of survey of committee membership too, of saying like, of, of, if we had like data, we had the data from the equity serve, like obviously, but like if we had done some sort of survey of saying like, well, this is not that, but of like who, who are, who who are the people who are volunteering now and what is their like race and class back and family backgrounds and like how how do they make time to be able to participate and what do they see as being barriers for participation and then to do like a follow-up survey in a year like because also it's like we're not going to see a huge amount of progress in a year either right it's like it's going to be a multi-year project of like building you know if you're like the one um, person on your committee, it's still going to be hard, right? And so it's like, um, and I'm like being able to chart kind of what that progress looks like. Um, and I know who fills out surveys is also super weighted, you know, so, um, but maybe like as part of the um, uh, recruitment for city committee chairs, we could also send out like a who is part of our um, committees now and um, have them send that out to their, their member and talk about it and then send it out to their members kind of at the meeting or after the meeting. Yeah, that was what I was going to recommend is y'all like creating this survey of like how, and I think that comes part and parcel with tracking the effectiveness right. of this program and, and asking them like, please put this out to all of your members. I think that's a great idea is that we were really trying to think of like why, how we would track who is like what is the change over time and it would be very hard because we don't collect that data and it seems like we've got a great built-in like april 11th meeting as like a deadline to have done this <laughs> or if we haven't gotten organized enough by then to roll it out <laughs> Is that just something that we can do like as an as a anonymous survey on like a Google form platform or would there be any problems with doing something like that with the city? Okay. Mm -mm. Maybe I'll take a stab at right drafting something up over the next couple of weeks um, if that sounds okay and then can can review it um, at our next meeting. I think it would be really important that I mean, I know it would need to be anonymous, like person wise, but I think we would need to track like per committee. Right. So, okay. All right. <laughs> well, like, where my brain just got stuck as I was saying that all the time is like, <laughs> what about all the people who are part of seven different committees, the Michael Shermans of the world, oh, yeah. right? And so is it a checkbox? Is it you fill it out once per committee? You know, because we'll be able to like, well, no, it's Michael Sherman when he checks off the seven committees that he's a part of, you know, <laughs> just like using him as an example because he's so freaking civically engaged. It's amazing. I mean, I can see one Google form where it's just mm -hmm. check all yeah. the, all that apply for committees yeah. at the top and then the same okay. question. And then I'll you get you a list. It's a, it's a lot. lot. I'll get you the list. Love, yeah. a, love a good committee. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, not having a lot of like, put in your thought. Yeah, just having your put in, yeah, anyway. Cool, I'm excited about that. Pellin, any any thoughts from you on this? I just haven't heard your voice in a little bit. Um, should we just check in about equity report next steps here too? Not equity report next steps, but um, 
I'm going to have the equity report next steps are to have this meeting and to share the next steps and everything else. But like kind of the next phase of this campaign was going to be having one big in-person launch event. Um, and, you know, I think we all had a lot of concerns about that when we started talking about it in, you know, just November, December. And then now that Creative Discourse has said that they're not going to go through with phase two of this. So sorry reminder the kind of the next couple of stages were to have a big launch of a launch event bringing everyone together um and then from there coming out with kind of cross issue or cross um group focus groups to really be able to like kind of not focus groups but like smaller groups to be able to dig in but where they're not identity based I, fo small groups they're cross issue small or small cross identity small groups and then from there to like make a kind of a final report and then do a big celebration and launch event. This is kind of like the pattern that's happened in Burlington and Essex and Winooski and other places. Mm -hmm. And here we are going into year three of the pandemic and we're saying probably doesn't make sense to have one big launch event. Um, does it make sense to have, um, to, to skip that and to go right into the cross issue focus with smaller groups is that we're not like building trust and having the bigger convert, like what, like, yeah, I'm just kind of wanting to, I meant to kind of check in with some other towns that had done this too. And I dropped the ball so I can maybe just hold on to that conversation. And then um, it wasn't actually specifically on our agenda, but just if anyone had any thoughts or reflections. If it doesn't get written down, it doesn't get done. And if it gets written down, there's like a 50-50 chance it gets done. So <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'd be interested if other communities have found a big gathering. Because I mean, it seems like, like eventually I'm hoping someday we can like, have big gatherings again. Yeah, like, like, so maybe it, it would be like where instead of that being like a launch thing, that's like a, we've done small work and then we all come together in a big event later. And that's not like the, I think planning that right now seems hard, but um, if you learn that that's like a valuable tool, I think we could still keep it as something to like build into a long-term plan potentially if we, um, but. I don't know. But I think another like parallel question to this is, you know, creative discourse isn't doing this. Do we want to open this up again to another consultant and to hire to be able to run kind of the next phase of this, whatever that phase may be? I think last time we talked about it, it seems like you're more focused on like what can we do as a committee with creative discourses like coaching like that is what they'd offer to continue to do um but it would be more on us as a committee um or you know we don't have a contract signed with them or anything so or would we want to kind of take it back out for an RFP and we don't we're not making any decisions <laughs> just okay I mean, I wonder if we like, I'm just thinking about like some process that maybe like this group, like we want to go through this and this winter of like, what's our, what's like, what's our vision? What are our goals? Like if we were going to write an RFP, I don't even know what we'd ask for because I think like we, I, speaking for myself, I, I don't feel like I have like total clarity on like what the options even are like creative discourse have kind of like a multi-year track. So that's one idea. If we were going to put it back out, like, I don't know. I'm just not totally clear on like what we'd be asking for. I think it could be good too, but I feel like we would need to do some internal work of like, what are we, what do we see as like big priorities for the community knowing it's still COVID, but there's, tools to still like get people together in various ways and still continue. I think also what creative discourse has given y'all and us has some very clear things to implement. 
And I'd be interested to see what that looks like and sort of talking through the implementation of those recommendations. And then by that time, maybe it'll be safe to to sort of re-engage with that phase two. And we'd have a better chance of um, getting buy-in and uh, trust because we have already done or attempted to do as many of the recommendations as possible, you know? Yeah. Right. So maybe, yeah. I think maybe I'll try to circle back with Michael over the next two weeks too, because I know he had just like a lot of really strong opinions about this. Um, but then it's sounding, yeah. So we could kind of write up what our organizational goals are, which are probably like starting with implementing the plan that we already have. And then um like from there, maybe making the decision to like punt this decision till after um, we get a better sense of like what's happening with COVID and what's happening with our plans and our priorities and um, maybe not, yeah. Okay, but yeah, I think, yeah, my next steps are I'll check in with Michael. Um, I'll see if I can check in with Michael. I'll draft up the summary. Uh, the the survey, not the summary. Um, I think that's it. Um, anything else to check in on, or should we set the agenda for the next meeting and get out of here? So I've got the following things. I just want to like go through because we we talked a lot. And I just want to make sure I've captured all of the um, to dos. So I'm going to send out the calendar hold for everyone, for all of the committees. I'm going to get Shana a list of all of our committees. That's fun. Um, I, you know, honestly, looking, thinking about it, I, I've been to all of them, all the meetings. I think I could tell you who is on them and like preliminary data, like observational data, right, about right. makeups of them. Uh, which would be helpful to sort of contrast between what people report and what yeah. I, we could get from like observation. Helpful so yeah. yeah, that would be interesting. Um, I'll, I'll fall, I'll continue to keep talking to Essex and maybe we can get them to come in and, and schedule like Marguerite coming in uh, sooner rather than later. Cause April's right around the corner. Thank goodness. Um, and then let's see. And then Shana is also going to start helping with like a, a survey about barriers to participation and demographics of those uh, groups. So I guess if anyone has any further questions or they should get those to you. Yeah, and I think uh, the next meeting we'll review it more too, I think so. For homework reasons, no worries. Um, it's time for the stipends. Well, and then also just checking in on. Um, I think next meeting agenda too is committee on committees, um, like small group discussion outcome goals, perhaps, like and, and plans for that. And so for folks to noodle on that for the next couple of weeks. So you want to talk about the stipends, you want to talk about committee on committee. And so the stipends could also include the demographic survey. Yeah, we're doing the survey. I mean, I wonder, Shana, like it seems a little bit like us getting real clarity on, you know, what questions we want to be able to answer, but through the pilot program. So if we're going to do the survey, let's make sure we're asking all the right questions to get that data. Um, so maybe that reviewing the survey as part of like the pilot, that section of the pilot proposal of, these are the things that we want to learn just to make sure that we don't like lose out on the opportunity for surveying everyone to get information that we would then wish we had. Totally.
because like some of it like how did you hear about this for example like might help inform like where and how are we advertising who's so everybody's just like inviting telling their friends to do it or and then you get the same circles of people you know how, i don't know how much most people like get involved or stuff like that but beyond demographics that might inform how we like advertise and whatever Right, I'm almost even curious, like, do people apply for committees and then don't get them? And what's their, how do they stay engaged after they don't get a point? Yeah, that's just um, another. That's very rare, that occasion. Right, that's like. <laughs> but then like almost everyone who applies to just like anecdotally, like has like master's degree, like it's a very certain type of person who is applying right now. Like everyone, you're like, this is like you're so overqualified. Very, like really impressive, like credentials, but also shows a certain like, you know, type of person who has a, had access to higher education, and and often even like many master's degrees or something, <laughs> which is which is great. And let's open it up to other people too. And then I'm also wondering if there's like logistical stuff too. Like Pellin, I know you said your daughter applied and the city's like, we never got her application. And yeah, so there's also just like those, um, if there's like technical- So tech city work. doesn't get her application? Sorry? So city doesn't get- her application they voted for no they i mean i i specifically remember her getting an email but yeah. um i don't i don't know i can't tell you if somebody doesn't respond to that i don't i don't know mm -hmm. helen i had it on my list to look into that and i apologize that i haven't gotten back yeah. to that i will write that yeah, down because and even her school told her she's in the comedy Right. So her, her school knows, which means there's some kind of <laughs> documentation, I suppose. But yeah, she hasn't received any email from city or us because she wants to attend the meeting. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> I don't want to talk on behalf of her, but that's all I know about the process. Hmm. She wants to really be involved. So that's why <laughs> I just want to mention. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, and I think, you know, it's been like six months, so, right. So. Yeah. I mean, I almost, it just makes me think of not, we don't need to go down these rabbit holes, but um, like how, how is the form set up is like intimidating to people that if they feel like they don't meet every, like, what's your educational background? Like if you don't have degrees and whatever the issue, you know, does it feel, is it inviting? I think like looking at every step of the process would be good of how people are recruited, apply, vetted, like to see where there might be like places where people get dissuaded from applying or hear about it. Right, like the life cycle <laughs> analysis. <laughs> anyway. cool. Just anecdotally, I've gotten a lot of feedback that it is difficult to fill out. Um, you know, I've printed it out for quite a few people or there's a, or there's a tendency to think even if they're coming to meetings as like a public participant that somehow they would need more in, you know, they would need to dedicate more time or something, even mm -hmm. though that's the time period that we're asking you to like work and do. So I, it's been interesting. I think there are quite a few, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, assumed barriers that might not actually exist, but obviously if people think that there's like some other requirement that they're not seeing, then we've done a bad job sort of explaining what it's, what committees even mean. <laughs> like, what does it even mean to be on a committee? Right. Okay, should we wrap it up there? And <laughs> I 
I'm just like, I don't want to be in this meeting anymore. Oh, no, no, no. I'm just <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't, if we keep coming, this survey is going to be five pages long. And no one's going to fill it. No, I'm like, like, no more ideas. No, just kidding. <laughs> No. Well, it's okay. okay if we wrap it up. <laughs> Great. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you, Palin. Thank you, Lauren. Good to meet Michael. Thank you, guys. Thank Great you. to meet you all. Bye. Thanks. Good day, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.